Welcome to a community update from the Department of Senior Affairs. I'm your host, Ed Nunez, and today we are on location at the Albuquerque Museum, where the Vivian Vance display is on exhibit until the end of the year, December 2014. Vivian Vance, as everyone knows, played Ethel in the I Love Lucy series, which is well known, world known, for comedy classic. With us to discuss Vivian Vance's life and career is her younger sister, Luann Graham. Luann, welcome to the show. Such a pleasure to have you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You bet. And you've seen this exhibit for, uh, you know, we'll talk about the exhibit here, and it's an amazing one. It's got so many pictures and relics from Vivian's life, and we'll talk about that. All belong to me. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, you've been here, you're, I think you're here on a daily basis. We're closed uh, today, but you're here on a daily basis to talk about Vivian's life so people can come and visit and ask you questions at any time, and I was able to do that about two weeks ago. That's how you and I met. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to start out, and Vivian began her acting career at the Albuquerque Little Theater. How did that happen? Well, that began, first of all, my, the rest of my family, four children and uh, my mother and father, all in one big car, moved from Kansas to Albuquerque. And my father opened a grocery store at Broadway and Cole. And that old brick building is now a historical monument. And it was by the only viaduct across the railroad at that time in Albuquerque. I love it that I was raised here because I tell people about the fact that Mountain Road and Candelaria and Epinum and all, and that's all there was, were all dirt roads. I don't know that. Well, anyway, a few, after we got settled here, my sister, Vivian, had left high school and gone into a show actually in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there she married the publicity man. And so then when she was finished, she came into Albuquerque to be with my, see my parents and us. And uh, at that time, at the chemo, there was a vaudeville show called the Cushman Review. And I remember one of my sisters taking me when I was about four to see her sing. And I can't remember how many years she did that, but it, at the time that she was at the Cushman Review, uh, Catherine O'Connor came from New York and she had tuberculosis, like so many people that came to Albuquerque. It was one big TV center. And she started uh, the little Albuquerque Little Theater at the chemo, actually. And Vivian, she had Vivian try out, and Vivian then started acting with the Albuquerque Little Theater before the building was even finished by the WPA. And uh, Catherine found her so talented that they gave a show, and I went to that, that show. It was a, somewhere in Golden Second or something they were using as a theater to see her, and they gave the money from the trial of Mary Dugan to Vivian to go to New York to study. And then, of course, that's where, it, that's where all the good acting begins, really. So uh, someone saw out of that and performance, she, saw some great she, things from her. She was so grateful to the little theater, she just worked so hard because she thought, I can't disappoint the people in Albuquerque. And she worked so hard. At that time, you didn't have to have an agent. You could just go stand in line and try out. And I have to tell you about how she got her first role. Uh, they were casting music in the air, and uh, she stood in, saw the line, stood in the line, and heard all these sopranos, which she was a soprano. And so, so when she got in, she got in, she sang, some of these days, because she said, I knew they needed altos. Mm -hmm. She did that. <laughs> and she got in the chorus. And she has come, she came back, even all the time she was doing Lucy, to the Albuquerque Little Theater and gave them shows in the summer. And her, the balcony at the Little Theater is named after her because one show that uh, John Patrick wrote for her uh, premiered at the Little Theater and it brought up enough money to put the balcony in, so it's called the Vivian Vance Balcony. And the other thing I love about the Little Theater is last year, Henry, who is the director, decided that he'd have an awards program and they call their award the Vivian. 
Oh wow! <laughs> so there's still a lot of uh, a lot of memories of what she did. And oh, I guess yeah. the thing I want to ask you is when she was doing Lucy, you said she did shows during the summer. How oh, many yeah. shows was she able to do during the summer? They're listed over there on SAEM. Yeah. Was she able to do uh, she, a lot she, of shows during the summer? Well, they didn't. They didn't uh, film in the summer. Right. They were on hiatus. Uh -huh. And so many times I, I I went to her shows where they were. Uh, one time uh, I saw one of them first in Chicago and then in New Hampshire. When I was, we were vacationing there. And then another time I went to Skowhegan, Maine. And I flew, I flew at her request back there to Boston and took a bus out to Skowhegan to drive her back to New York because she had had a mastectomy and couldn't drive. And I don't know, I can't tell you who drove her as far as County again, but it was one of her tours and that was Butterflies Are Free. But she never stopped doing the stage. She just it was her first love. And she was the only stage actress of the four of them. Oh, wow. And, and Lu Lucy, right. Lucy has said, if wow. any of us ever break up, then be sure and focus on Vivian because she is always in character. Well, and so again, William Frawley, uh, Desi Arnaz, and Lucille Ball, she's the only stage actor of all four of them. That's right. Okay, that's really important. I think the other thing I wanted to ask you about her Broadway career, what was the longest running show that she had? It was about the last, uh, last Broadway show she did. It was called Let's Face It with Danny Kay, and that was his first stage show. And uh, there was Eve Arden and Edie Miser, and that ran five, 500 shows. Wow. Two and years. of course, Eve Arden and Danny Kaye, yeah. everybody remembers, uh, remembers well, when, them. When she started in, once she got that first chorus role, you know, she got other chorus roles, uh, Cole Porter gave her several roles because he fell in love with her and her voice. And, and she was in a show with Bob Hope in his first show. <laughs> Uh, and Ethel Merman, who was a really, some people don't remember Ethel Merman, but she was a big, big star on Broadway. And uh, so when they, when she did Anything Goes, uh, Vivian understudied her. And uh, then Eth Ethel went to the coast to do the film. And this was Viv's big, big break. She went into the lead of Anything Goes on Broadway. Well, you know, some of the people that you've mentioned Ethel Merman, Eve Arden, Danny Kaye, Bob well, Hope, I mean... Well, uh, this woman right here, Gertrude right. Lawrence, uh -huh. she, they, she, her, she's in that program. I have a lot of her programs. Uh, she was with her. So that was one thing that helped her a great deal to work with Lucy because she had been with big women stars like Ethel Merman and Gary Lawrence. And, knew her, and she was always the other woman, the right. glamour girl. Uh -huh. That's why this was a very strange show for her to go into because Ethel, Mer <laughs> Ethel Mertz was not a glamour girl and, and in fact was made not to look like one, but she's a beautiful woman, you know. Oh, no doubt. There's plenty of pictures that show yeah, that here. Yeah. And let's get into that. You know, you mentioned how she did Broadway and she did the Albuquerque Little Theater, uh, theater and things like that. How did she get the Ethel Merch uh, role? How did that, she get it's that? It's a very interesting story. During her career, she also did a lot of road shows, like Come to Pope Joy, and uh, she did Voice of the Turtle. They weren't musicals, they were usually just shows, straight shows. And she did Voice of the Turtle, and uh, I can't remember the exact year, but it was in the 40s. She had a nervous breakdown in Chicago, and her husband was acting here in Sa oh, here, San Francisco. Not here, in San Francisco. I didn't live so long in San Francisco. Uh, and so it took her a while to get well, and the first show she took was Voice of the Turtle, and I think that's so wonderful that that proved that she was so well. And she was performing at the La Jolla Playhouse in Southern California, and they were looking for Ethel Mertz. And one of her former directors, Martin, told uh, Desi, you ought to go see Vivian Vance. She's down in La Jolla right now performing. So the two of them went down that night. 
And he saw the show, went backstage and gave her the job, well, offered her the job and scared her to death. Mm -hmm. she didn't, television was new as you know, at, at that time. And uh, she was used to signing a run of the show contract, you know, and they were offering her a five year contract, which she never had in her life. So she didn't take it right away, but she took it then soon. And uh, when she reported, uh, Lucy had wanted B. Benadera, who is kind of a frumpy woman, you know, a character actress. Right. And uh, so she went to the first read. <laughs> well, she, he, he went home and told he had found Ethel Mertz, and she said, Who was it? And he told her, and so she wasn't. She wasn't sure that's what was going to work, but it didn't take her long to find out that Vivian was a real asset to that cast, and they became, of course, very good friends. And often in a show, Vivian was a play doctor. She was very good about knowing what to cut out of shows and put back into shows and things. And you know, they would sit the first day and go over the script. And of course, they had these marvelous script writers. I mean, they had, that show had the best script writers, the best directors, three cameras, which Desi Arnaz, if you don't know this, was it was him that decided to use three cameras instead of one. So you'll appreciate this. Their film editor went nuts because he had to take three films, and it was film at first, three films and put them all together into one show. And I met him a couple of times and, uh, when I went back to Desi Lou, uh, Desi Lou show in Jamestown, New York, which was, is Lucy's hometown. Uh, and he had those three things there. You can look and see how he put it all together. It was interesting. And uh, it just, and the four of them, in spite of the problem with her and Bill, it just couldn't have been better. I just had everything right. You know, one of the things that you mentioned was the three cameras, Desi Arnaz breaking new ground as far as doing things in a different way. But one thing that you mentioned that she was nervous about television, it's in front of a live audience, right? They oh, take yeah. in front of a live audience. Oh, well, she's used to being in front right. of a live audience. That was, that was nothing for her. Right, that's, that's, but that's true. But it was hard for a lot of other people. And, uh, and then, like you said, uh, Lucille Ball and her, you can't think of one without the other. So just that history that you just mentioned there is just incredible. It really is. It is. Some great stuff there. And, yeah. and, and after the I Love Lucy, Lucy series, you know, then they did the hour shows. And then they did the Lucy show, which was her as a divorced woman and Lucy as a widow. The Lucy show was the next thing. and. Uh, she stayed with that three years, actually. She had remarried it at the, about that time, and and she had a home in New York as well as in California. And uh, she wanted to be with her. Her husband was an editor, book editor, and of course most of that's in New York. Although he's a San Franciscan, he was a San Franciscan. But um, so. Lucy did try to get her to do, keep on going and do another show, and she, she was just tired and wanted to be with her new husband. And you can't blame her. I think yeah. uh, that brings us to our next question. You know, we know that she liked uh, acting and being on stage, yeah. but what did she like? What else did she like to do in her well, spare time? That's one reason I go out and make talks about her, and one reason I did these books about her, and one reason I did these shows about her, is that. Most people think of her as Ethel Mertz, and she knows she knew that. I mean, she she has. I have a wonderful tape. I, I mean, it's a DVD that uh, one of the old Lucy people made me to. I went to twice to Jamestown, New York, to, and I talked and did some things there for for the Desi Lou Festival thing, and he made me the most wonderful wonderful DVD of all the movies she had made and all the guest things she had done and you know to show people how much she did besides and of course I just got a group together because of this of actors and you know, we did four shows of 
scenes from plays that she had done, so mm -hmm. I could show people. She was a versatile actress. I mean, she wasn't didn't just right. do, do that one show. Not just Ethel Merckx. And Mertz. that's not right. And that wasn't her. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't her as much as one of the others, but. She also was offered to write a book at one time because uh, she loved to cook. We all loved to cook. My mother was a wonderful cook. And, uh, and she took a $10,000 down payment. And after she wrote several chapters, and she read them to me, a lot of them, she decided she didn't want to do it because she would have had to go on talk shows, and she didn't want to. So she gave the money back. Wow. And didn't ever write the book. So she really did, was more, like she you said, loved, of a homebody. She right. loved to be home. She loved to cook. She was a marvelous gardener. She always had those beautiful gardens. And uh, she, the real Vivian, you know, was just like me. I remember, like, like our family. We just love, we do love our family and our right. home. She never bought a big, big house. She always had just a very comfortable house. Oh, and beautifully decorated because she was so good at that. And I've spent many times in her homes, and I have a few pictures of them in my books. And, uh, but not, not, uh, not someone that liked to go to all the Hollywood parties and see be seen. And, well, she went know. to parties, and she had a lot of like, good friends. Right. And I met. And uh, when she lived in Stanford, New Connecticut, out way out in the country, even had a red barn. barn. It was wonderful. I met Mildred Dunnock, and I met uh, well, Benny Goodwin lived just around the corner, and wow. uh, a, a lot of the people that she, Martha Scott, and she actually she and Martha Scott were roommates when they were just beginning in New York, and and actually I went with Martha one time down in L.A. to the opening of Chorus Line in L.A. And uh, her husband was a marvelous musician. He had been Benny Goodman's pianist, and he taught at Yale. And then he, st he started teaching at a music school in the, in the, the valley uh, down in L.A. And they live there. I'm sure they're not alive anymore either, I don't know. <laughs> But who knows? Do uh, you know the other question we wanted to ask is, did she have children? No, Vivian never had any children. She didn't think that children should be in show business. And I met some of the children in LA, and I agree with her. <laughs> but uh, I, we, all the rest of us, had children. So she'd say, I already have all these nieces and sisters. I don't need any children of my own. Yeah. Yeah. But she always had a dog and a cat. She loved animals and uh, took them with her whenever she went from coast to coast. And of course, she came home every summer, even when she lived in New York, as long as she had the money. And uh, so uh, when one of my vivid memories of her is when I was about five and she was leaving for New York. And we lived actually in an adobe house in, on our home. And, uh, and we were in the kitchen. I just can still see this scene. She said to Mother, I'm afraid she'll forget me. And I knew she was talking about me. But there was no way he could forget her. She never let a week go by. She didn't write home my mother to my mother. And later on, when, as we were all adults, we wrote family letters, you know, that we passed on. And, and she sent postcards from anywhere she went. My mother always got a postcard, and I got a postcard. And uh, I mean, she she kind of felt like the second mother in our family, I think, because my my own mother was hard to deal with sometimes. <laughs> well, she never forgot who she, uh, who she was no, then she or her never, family. Never. And even though she chose Vance instead of Jones, you know, we were the Jones family. She thought that was too common for an actress. <laughs> okay, so she went with Vance. And I, some people tell me, where'd you get Vance? And the story I remember, but I know that the, the curator who put this together found another story. Uh, I, I heard she got it off of a racing form. <laughs> wow. But I don't know if that's where it really, you know. But it goes well with it. Man. It sure does. <laughs> the other question is we wanted to ask is, how did Albuquerque become her hometown? She fell in love with New Mexico. 
I mean, that's all. That's why she came back here so often. Now, did she live in New Mexico? Yes, never lived in Albuquerque. She came back here with her last husband to Santa Fe and lived there a couple of years. She wanted to live there, but he wasn't happy there. And uh, when my brother-in-law, Ralph Boyer, was the coach at Grants High School, and as my sister Mickey's husband, mm -hmm. uh, she, they had some very good friends that had the trading post on 66 in Cubero. Do you all remember 66? <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh at people that, I, that come new here and found out that I lived in a town of 35,000 here once. Uh, anyway, they had a big ranch right, right near Acoma in Cubero, and, they, and so they sold her five acres of the ranch and fenced it for her and put in a, a windmill. And my brother-in-law, Ralph, with his cow, his, his Players from Grand Sai and the Acoma Indians built, they built all the adobes. I, see, I love adobes so much. I mean, and some people don't say, what's he talking about? Uh, anyway, they built new adobes and built that little house, put in a view, I remember he put in a beautiful fireplace, probably a great big stone to put across. And it had uh, two, uh, uh, Two bunks and a hide a bed in the living room, the little living room, and one bedroom, and then a sleeping porch, and a little kitchen, and of course a bathroom. And our whole family spent loads of time out there. And she and Phil, when she was married to Phil, over lived there many times, so she did live here. So when I went in 2012 to get that trophy, mm -hmm. when she was taken into the Hall of Fame, I, I found a wonderful Navajo uh, seamstress here who made me a Navajo dress. And I went to the Beverly Hills Hotel in a Navajo dress, uh, black and that. And the man at uh, Wright's, I still call it Wright's Trading Post, is what it was downtown. I went to him and said, do you know somebody that can sell me a Navajo dress? And he said, well, if you're going to wear a Navajo dress, then I will lend you some jewelry. He lent me $10,000 worth of jewelry to wear. <laughs> and if I'd give him a picture, which I did. Two? Wow. That's a heck of a story. Uh, you know, the other thing we wanted Are we to ask you about. Are taking all 30 minutes with me, talking? No, no, that's okay. That's okay. You know, we got, we got, we got things to, uh, to cover here. And uh, the other thing we wanted to ask you was, when is her birthday and where was she in the family of six? You said you had a family of six. Yes, she was the next to oldest. Right, and her birthday? Uh, July 26th, 1909. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, I, and in 09 here, Marty uh, uh, Chavez helped me put together a show for her at the chemo. I gave her a 100 birthday, birthday party. Wow. And I did call CBS and I got a cup of couple of the films and the one that this that Tom had made me of her and uh, talk and had, and had people and uh, a wonderful lady baked us a cake and uh, it was it was a lot of fun and that's where she began you know the chemo right you know going back to I Love Lucy how did uh, she get along with co-star Lucille Ball fine she got along with well they were like sisters I mean, sometimes they didn't agree on things, and sometimes they, you know, but it didn't matter. I mean, they were the best of friends, and once, once Lucy got acquainted with who Vivian really was, she adored her, and she called her by her middle name, Roberta. Really? Yeah, she never called her. <laughs> yeah, that I don't age. think I've heard that she one. She called her Roberta. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Now, William Frawley, who played Fred Mertz, was a different story. William Frawley, yeah. known for being a bit grumpy. Uh, can you describe their relationship, her on screen husband, that's Fred the way, Mertz? That's the way he is. That's, that's Bill Frawley. Right. Well, anyway, um, I can't remember the timing on it, but early in the show, she said to somebody in the crew or something, I hate being married to an old, older, older man. He was 20 years older than Vivian. And see, she had come from all these glamour roles. 
and and she she isn't a person that insults people. I mean, she's not like that. But I can see. I don't know what brought up that. I don't know. But he hurt her, and from then on, they were never friends. He but, would he wouldn't forgive her, and they would make up. But still, great on screen chemistry. Still, but, still but, a good oh, on screen. Still did a great they job. They were actors, right? Professional. Good actors. Yes. And uh, that didn't affect their t the show at all. But it, he was single and loved to hang in bars and go to baseball games and bet on horses and everything. Uh, I mean, they were the least alike. <laughs> but but it all was, well, they wanted, like she wanted to be very nice. They wanted um, Gordon uh, as, as Fred, but he was doing another show. Gail Gordon? Yeah. Mr. Mooney on yeah. Here's Lucy? Yeah, and he yes. finally got, she, she finally got him in a show, but he was doing another show. Oh, but they wanted him that's originally who, that's who for they Fred wanted. Mertz. Yeah. Well, yeah, William they, Frawley worked out pretty well, I guess. Well, he did. Yes. He did a great job. Yes. The other question we wanted to ask you is, uh, how many times was, was uh, or how many husbands did Vivian have? I think one of them passed away. Uh, I think you told me that, I believe. Uh -huh. How many husbands did, was she, how many times was Four. she married? Four. Four times. But that first one in, in Tulsa, once they came to Albuquerque and they had a, uh, actually Deborah found this out, that they had an apartment on coal. Uh, they, don't, they weren't married much over a year. She was probably on 19 or 18 and they were divorced in Albuquerque before she went to New York. Then she married a musician from a show, a violinist for six years and then she married Phil Ober, who was a wonderful actor, a very good actor, and they were married a long time, I think near 19 or 20 years. And then, I, I hate to say this, but, and he's died, he died, by the way. Uh, during the Lucy show, he got very jealous because he had been the main actor in the family. Because mm -hmm. he was, on Broadway, he was very, very, uh, acted all the time. He was from the East and a uh, very handsome man, good actor, but he ended up you know, playing tennis and everything while Vivian was working and she was making the money and that's very hard for some men. Especially at that time. Yeah, and uh, he just got mean, that's all. Right. And uh, so they divorced. Mm -hmm. He married a woman in Puerto Vallarta, an American woman and they moved for Rivera. But we all loved Phil. We were sorry he was gone. And then she married Johnny Dons in San Francisco. Well, she married him in Santa Fe. They oh, wow. Married. They were married in Santa Fe and uh, lived mostly in California, of course, because he was from San Francisco. Did she ever live in New Mexico? Just, just when she would live in the little house or those two years in Santa Fe. But she was here so often. But she considered Albuquerque her hometown. Yes, she did. But she didn't live here. No. Wow. Okay. All right. She just. Well, All she right. Just, and she came back so often. I mean, she came to see us, our family, when my brother and I still lived at home and mother and dad. And she'd go to see my sister Mickey in Las Vegas, and Ralph. And she, and she took actually my sister Dorothy into her home in New York once Dorothy got out of high school. And she lived there a while, and then she she kept visiting all of us. And I can't tell you how many times that I visited her. Her home in Pacific Palisades when she was doing Lucy was only 15 minutes from the ocean, and at that time the Santa Monica Beach was very clean. So I had three mm. children, and what a nice place for a you know, vacation, you know. Right. And she loved having us, loved having, loved taking us to dinner and cooking, and she. She, she always kind of, one time when she came through here, she picked up my brother who was 16 to drive with her to LA. She loved having somebody in the family with her. We were a very, very close family. Sure sounds like it, sure yeah. sounds like it. Did, uh, did she ever give up stage work? Did she ever give up never. stage work? She never did. As long as she could act. Oh, and one thing she did, it was so wonderful when she did a Lucy special. You know, once she quit the Lucy series, she'd do those hour specials. Uh, she took all her sisters to Hawaii. We all went to Hawaii for 10 days, 
you know, on to, on oh, wow. And she, she took all of us with this money. That's a long time. That's Ten days is. That's what you is, is, to is, do. Uh, Sounds like a lot of fun. Just things that took five girls, five women, and we were, and we had a wonderful time. And we, none of us had, at that time had seen Hawaii. Wow. You know, you, you mentioned a play called The Vance Players. Do you want to talk about that at all? Uh, 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 well, that, that was my group. That's, that's your group, right? And I got together to do scenes from the plays. Do you want to mention that, talk about that a little bit? Well, it's all finished, but I, I'm glad I did it. Uh -huh. And it, I think it per, helped its purpose. It just showed her versatility and how many different things she could do. You know, uh, I teach at the little theater. So. Oh, you still do? Great. You know, I have a master's in theater. I, had, I was in San Francisco for 25 years, and I, I started for the professional there to their, their children's training program. And then I left there and started my own theater in San Francisco. So I'm, you, uh, <laughs> I've been very busy, too. You mentioned being in the uh, streets of San Francisco yeah. in the TV series. Oh, and you know, when we lived in France, we did lots of films. They, they redid, uh, if you remember Truffaut, uh, he made all his movies in East France, and well, he died young, and they closed the studios. But just before he moved there, they opened the studios, the city of Nice opened them, and almost all our clients were Americans or English. So they advertised for actors who could speak English. <laughs> wow. And so we got a lot of work. and. Knees in France. I'm sure you've it got a whole like bunch it. of it. You know, let's go and talk about her last two years of her life. You uh, you, you nursed her during yes, the, that time. Yes, you I want do. to talk about a little bit about that? Yes, I do. It was, she lived in a little town called Belvedere across the Golden Gate Bridge, and I lived in San Francisco. And uh, she first, actually, in New York, got breast cancer. And then five years later, she was doing a show in LA and start having these f funny feelings. And it mysticized into her bones. So the, she moved then back up to Belvedere. Uh, and the last two years that she lived, she was in terrible pain. And she, I'd drive up every day and take her to the hospital for her, her therapy. And I'd, I'd cook meals and put them in the refrigerator for them to eat, because uh, I was running a theater, too. Mm. And uh, the last three weeks, I got a call on the phone from her husband and said, Vivian has decided to die, and she wants you to come out. And so I went right out. And when I went up and sat on her bed, she said, did John tell me? And I said, yes. And the first thing she says to me is, now I want you to have all my clothes because none of the other girls can wear them. And I thought, oh, Viv, I mean, here she's offering me her clothes when she's doing it. Now. And then I stayed for the doctor to come that afternoon. And he said, is this what you want, Viv? And she said, yes. He said, do you want to come to the hospital? He said, oh, no. She already had two nurses uh, with the daytime because her husband worked. And he was there at night. And, and then I, I took the third shift. The first thing I did out of Albuquerque High is I went to St. Joseph's and took some nurses training. And so I was there uh, for those last three weeks every day. And, uh, and she didn't eat or drink anything for three weeks. And that was it. And her, her ashes are in San Francisco Bay. Mm -hmm. And it was a very, very strange time because People in 1979 didn't do things like that. I mean, most people do not know she won she did this because she wanted to. Right. And I couldn't believe it. As far as <laughs> that she that she would do that, that anybody would do that. It just was surprising to me. You mean choose to, to choose, die? Choose. Right. Choose yeah. to die instead of going and but, trying to get better and using did. the medicine. You know, I right. That, I thought right. that was so brave of her. It sounds like it. It sure and sounds she, like it. She still had a sense of humor. One day Peggy said as she was leaving, is there anything I can get you with him? Yeah, a new body. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she just, as long as he could talk and everything, she just kept on. And what the doctor said, she said to him, just promise me I won't 
have any more pain. And he said, you just ask for shots whenever you need them. And we gave them to her. So you were there right up until the end, yeah, and you were there right when the she end, passed yeah. away? You know, Luann, I, 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 we, of course, thank you for being on the show. And you've been here uh, the, at the exhibit. How long has the exhibit been here at the museum? How long has it been it here It opened now? on March 29th and will be actually open until the end of next January. Okay, so I was wrong. It's, it's going to be uh, well, not until December. They be, changed it. They changed it to yeah. another month. Now, I, I was here the other day, and what's one of the, uh, the uh, people, are, are you here every day, Luann? No, no, just You're here on Wednesdays, Wednesdays. And, and I think this summer I'm going to start coming on Saturdays, too. Okay, what is, you know, and I saw a lot of people asking you questions. <laughs> yeah. What is one of the most interesting questions that you've been asked about your sister? Oh, my gosh. What I think is so wonderful is all the people that come to Albuquerque. I'm such an Albuquerque, and at first I say, are you from New Mexico? Uh, anyway, uh, oh, they asked me the, the thing about William Frawley. Most people have heard that. Right. And, and do, did she and Lucy get along? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, so many of them are astonished that she's done anything but Lucy. Now, that's a whole new thing to most people. Well, you sure taught us a lot about and that of today. It's, it's still running. Right, <laughs> and will continue until the, for the next 200 years. You know, Lu Luann, we got about a minute left, and I want to ask you this, and I think it's fair to do that. Anything else you want to say about, we sure appreciate you being our guest. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to wrap this up with by, you know, it's been great information about your sister. I learned a lot. I'm sure the guys learned a lot here, too. Anything you want to wrap the show up with about Vivian Vance? Anything you want to uh, let everybody know? I think you told everybody a lot, but is there one I more thing you want to say? I think she was one of the most brave and talented people I ever knew. And she was a very nice sister. Well, it sounds just like a gracious uh, woman, very gracious, very humble, very honest, and very hardworking. Well, she had a lot of troubles, too, in her life, of course, getting started, but that's, that's all behind us. I mean, she was such a kind person. After she had her breakdown, she went to mental hospitals and visited all the time to tell people, you know, it's going to be all right. That was really something I admired in her. Boy, it sounds... She was really very good about that. Well, Luann Graham, younger sister of Vivian Vance, thanks so much for being our guest today. You're welcome. What an Thank honor you. and pleasure. Thank you. For the Department of Senior Affairs, I'm Ed Nunez. And being